Welcome to another episode on Divorce Wars, and I'm calling this Part 2A because there is a continuation to the story that I told you in Part 2, and it is truly horrifying. But what I want to talk to you all about today is if you are facing a situation or someone you know is facing a situation where divorce may be on the horizon, how do you determine if you should be the first to file? So let's step back a little bit and let's talk again about uh, my part two story. Part two story involved a husband and wife, and the wife filed a just fraudulent statement. She showed up at a battered woman's shelter and claimed to have been thrown out of the home at a time when the husband was two or three hours away and clearly could prove it. But that was the basis that they entered into court for the initial hearing was one of an accusation of abuse, that they were physically thrown, wife and children, from the home, and that was the basis for the divorce filing. Now, as I shared with you in part two, that was easily disproven, fortunately, because the, the husband kept the receipts and could prove that he was nowhere near um, the home when this alleged incident occurred. Had he not have had those receipts, very different thing would have happened. But I want to share with you, if you haven't listened to part two, and please go back and listen. But if you haven't listened, when the initial filing occurred, the court had to assume that it may be true. They had to assume that there was some threat to the wife and the children. Therefore, they issued temporary restraining orders. And for a period of a couple months, the husband, my friend, could not see his children, could not call them could not show up at their schools. And imagine for a wife who's willing to show up at a battered woman's shelter with a clearly fraudulent claim and take up a bed that should be given to, you know, a wife or husband that's actually under severe threat and duress, take up that bed under fraudulent accusations. What they might do for the next two months, what they might tell the children as to why they can't see that father. So, this is why I want to talk very briefly about whether or not you should consider, again, try to work things out in your marriage. If you can't, try to get a mediator involved and negotiate something fair so that you can both start your lives anew and do so successfully without the harm and damage and financial blows that divorce can take. But especially if you suspect that there's going to be something contentious in your future, should you consider being the one to file first? Now, in this husband's case, he said to me, I didn't want to be the first to file because I didn't want to be responsible for breaking up this family. I wanted the children to know that it was not my choice. It was my spouse's choice. And we can understand emotionally why that might be something that we would all consider. But here's the reality. Whoever files first in court is explaining the reason for that divorce to the court. And imagine if this husband, knowing that they had reached in a place of irre irreconcilable differences, rather than leaving a note as he did, and as I shared in part two, rather than leaving a note on the table, going out of town and asking his wife if they could sit down and talk together about how to you know, navigate through the separation, imagine if instead when his spidey sense tingle, if he would have just retained an attorney and filed paperwork with the court and said, we just have irreconcilable irre differences, and that's the cause for this divorce. Now granted, the wife who had this alternative plan, this nefarious, ugly, horrible alternative plan, could have contested it by saying, no, no, there's been abuse in the past. But it would have thrown out the window the story about being thrown from the home. <clears throat> it would have put her and her counsel on the back foot in terms of proving abuse being the basis because you've got one partner in that marriage being perfectly reasonable and saying, we just have a marriage that's irreconcilable. We can't, you know, stay together. We've got to break this marriage and begin to focus on what's on the best interest of the children. He wouldn't have lost two months with his children. He wouldn't have had whatever negative seeds were planted in those two months about why the children can't see dad. And, you know, 
having known the family, the children were very close to their father. So this two month separation could have been all the time that that wife needed to plant fake stories and tell them what she quote unquote had never told them before. Imagine the harm that could have been undone had that hu husband stepped up first and been the first one to file and alerted the court, these are the reasons in my view that we need to proceed towards a divorce as opposed to the grounds that were filed. So if you or someone you know, someone you care about, may be facing a separation and divorce and they're seeing signs of contentiousness, perhaps they're aware or suspect that their spouse has already gotten an attorney, uh, perhaps they are aware or suspect that it might be a contentious divorce. Remember that the motivation, when there are children involved especially, and best interests of the child based on court guidelines suggests that 50-50 custody is in the best interest of the children, there has to be a basis to contest that. Otherwise, the courts, assuming that both parents love their children equally, will try to give them equal time as their work situations allow to be parents to their children, unless there is a mitigating circumstance, such as abuse, as an example. And by being the first to file and level setting the expectations towards a reasonable resolution as opposed to wild accusations, could you save you and your family unnecessary heartache and expense and damage to your children by being the first to file? And I want to remind all of you, this is not meant to be legal advice. In fact, it is not. I am not an attorney, and I highly advocate in the initial phases where you suspect the divorce may be on the horizon that you get good legal counsel and great legal advice. And this by no means is a substitute for that. What I want to do is just raise awareness and raise understanding of the risks and give you strategies to think about in order to navigate this potentially painful experience in the best way possible so that you and your family can heal. You can start your new life separately and do so successfully and with the assets and resources in place to really support one another through this transition. Um, again, my name is Philip Mackall. I'm a five-time published author, host of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series. And please look out for uh, part three of this series where we're going to talk about the temporary orders and what follows. And we're going to go all the way through this husband story and others uh, who I've had the chance to help over the years. Again, not legal advice, but a way to potentially protect yourself, protect your family, protect your children, protect your assets um, with the goal of healing, of love, and recovery through this process and the starting of a new and wonderful life in the future. So thank you for joining. If you haven't done so already, please click the like button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Please join me for future episodes.